Western stereotypes of this part of the world are very specific, right? They're like, yeah, women are feminine and men are masculine and quite frankly, nothing could be further from the truth. Now, there are instances of this kind of stuff, but if you come to Minsk, for example, the primary method of a man and a woman getting together is the guy simping. This is what I see time and time again. If you don't know what simping is, first of all, you live under a rock. Second of all, simping just means that the guy is spending time, money, effort, all this stuff on a woman, and the woman doesn't really reciprocate with anything other than taking. There seems to be just like a general disinterest in men here, a real kind of indifference towards men. And, and as a result, it seems that this simping culture has developed. Now, I want to give you a really good example. This happened to me during the week, and I was kind of in the middle of this kind of bizarre love triangle. So what happened was, I was just walking down the street, I was going to a restaurant to meet two of my friends. And this girl gave me a big smile as I walked past her, which is unusual in Belarus. But look, I'm pretty out there, uh, not through this channel, but through other means, my face is kind of out there. So if someone gives me a big smile and a deliberate look, I've learned that it probably means they know who I am. So I usually just give like a polite nod and a smile back and then just kind of keep moving. Now the other variant of this, of course, is the predator girl, which you might bump into from time to time, who's very friendly and open towards you because she has an agenda, right? So look, the girl's either one of these two. Either way, I, I don't really want to have a conversation. So I just kind of kept walking, did the polite Belarusian thing, went to my friends, had a meal. I came back in that direction and I saw the girl again. And she was in a cafe by herself with her laptop. And I did a quick assessment of her and she looked really normal. So what did I look for? I looked for money. How much money has she put on herself, right? What are the clothes? What's the makeup? What's the blah, 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 blah? How much is she investing in her appearance? Because that tells you her priorities in life, right? The more she has all this stuff, the more she wants to be reimbursed and have her wealth increased by a man. And the more that that's her only objective. So for me, who wants a genuine kind of person, I generally stay away from girls that have too much stuff going on, right? So I did a quick assessment of her, and she just had a normal, you know, Kmart, Walmart dress, normal shoes, normal hair, no makeup, no other extra weird stuff going on. She's not trying to show off her Apple icon on her phone or something. She's just like a really normal girl. So I'm like, look, you know what? I'm walking past. It doesn't hurt. I'm going to stop by and have a quick chat with her. She was sitting on like a long bench thing with a table in front of her. So I just sat kind of on the adjacent chair and, you know, Starosvichy, and just had a bit of a chit chat and just trying to suss her out, you know, is this kind of girl who could be interesting for me or not? And we chatted for about 10 minutes. And in this time, look, she was very pleasant, very friendly, as Belarusians are. It's part of their kind of culture to be very outwardly pleasant and friendly, especially to foreigners. But I got about 10 minutes in. I'm like, you know what? This girl's not really suitable for me. You know, it's, it's, it's just a, not an appropriate match. So I was about to go, and what happened? A dude shows up. Now, he's quite tall, handsome, well put together, well dressed. He's got some money, obviously. And he kind of looked a bit shocked to see me there. And look, I don't want to outstay my welcome. You know what I mean? Like, if the girl's uncomfortable or there's something kind of weird going on, I don't want to, like, move in with them, right? But I'm just kind of assessing what's happening. And he's kind of looking at her. I'm like, oh, you guys like colleagues or something. And then he sat down right next to her. Then kissed her. But she really pushed the cheek out like this, right? So he got like a face full of cheek. And he just said, no, we're not colleagues. We're just really, really close. Right? And I know what that means. That means he's an orbiter. And she has no interest. And at that exact moment, right... She leant forward to me on a 45 degree angle and said, we're just friends. Yep. It's, it's like a TikTok video that goes viral. And I was living in this situation. And I'm like, oh man, another one. This is savage. So at this point I'm thinking, well, what should I do? Because I'm not particularly interested in the girl. Um, I don't want to cause a big drama, but I'm also curious. So me being me, I'm like, I'm just going to stay here. Yeah, unless it's obvious that I'm not welcome, I'm just gonna sit here. Because the guy was looking pretty butt hurt. The guy had this tension in his face, his, his lips were like going like a butthole, right? Like, and he's looking at her, looking at me, he's, he's pretty he's pretty aggro. But the girl's just kind of giggling and whatever, and I could see the differences in the energy she's giving to him 
versus the energy she's given to me. So as I say, being a curious chap, I'm like, I'm just gonna hang in here and just kind of see what happens. <laughs> see the dynamic, right? See the train wreck that this guy set up for himself. So I thought, well, obviously the thing I need to do here is be friendly to the guy, right? Because he's fuming, like smoke is coming out of his ears, right? If it was like a boyfriend or a husband, they'd probably just say, how are you going? You know, maybe, shake your hand, maybe not, I don't know. But probably just that. But an orbiter, a simp, he has this kind of inner frustration, right? So he's really angry. He's like, this guy's going to steal my girl. She's going to be my girl. And it's like, the only way she's going to be your girl is if she suddenly becomes emotionally open and just feels this kind of, I don't know, desperation, urgency. Maybe urgency is a better word. Because this girl was 27. So if he was to orbit and simp for maybe five years, she might hit 32 and be like, holy shit. I need to have a kid. Uh, looks like he's the one. So I'm chatting mainly with the guy, just getting to calm down a bit, got him to smile and laugh, and he was okay. But as soon as I'd switch my attention back to the girl, he would get this tension, angry look. And he was really looking at her, and he was observing the body language. The cross legs towards me, the playing with the hair, the scratching the neck, all these little things, the, the excessive giggling that a girl... Well, it doesn't mean she's interested, but it just means that she's giving you a shot, maybe. You know, in most cultures anyway. So he's watching this, right? I can see his eyes going up and down and his face is getting tighter and tighter and tighter as he's observing the difference in the way that she's uh, using her body towards me versus how she usually uses it towards him. Look, maybe another eight or 10 minutes passed. I'm not sure uh, about this. I was kind of mixing languages because he spoke mainly English, she spoke mainly Russian. It's kind of going back and forth. It was getting to be a bit of a headache, but I was really fascinated by what was going on because this kind of guy like he's the kind of guy that does have options he's tall handsome uh works in a field where you make a lot of money here and it's like why are you simping for her like it's like what's going on it's really kind of weird so i thought you know what i want to get their instagrams that's a nice way to say goodbye you know like all right guys have a nice evening uh do you guys have instagram and get both their instagrams and just see what I can find on their Instagram. Just like a one minute scan over, right? To try to work out what's going on there. Because you know that her Instagram's full of photos of her and his Instagram's got lots of references to her. Probably, right? That's the assumption. So I'm like, oh, let's go grab your Instagrams. So I gave my uh, phone to her to find herself and then press request. And I can see his face getting really tight, right? But I clearly said Instagrams, right? Plural. So that's like, all right. And then she is like the fidgety, nervous energy in her fingers as she presses the search button and, and tries to find herself. You can really feel that, um, that she knows she's being a naughty girl, you know, and in, she knows that she's really disrespecting this guy by doing this. So she does that, blah, 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 and quickly gives the phone back to me. And I'm like, I wanted the guy's Instagram as well, but now the phone's back in my hand and I can see how freaking angry that guy is. I'm not giving that guy my phone in case he does something because he's pissed. At this point, he could throw the phone or who knows, right? So I'm not going to hand my phone to him. So I kind of left it be. Just to fill in the gaps, this guy will be paying for her. This guy will be driving her places. This guy will be bending his entire schedule to fit with her. If he lives an hour away and she has a half hour window after work, he'll drive all that way to see her to make sure everything's convenient for her, right? This is kind of what simping is. And in his mind, there's a possibility of them, or a hope of them, maybe getting together. He just kind of hangs in there and be a good guy and all this kind of stuff. But for her, you can see just the absolute lack of respect. Disinterest, indifference, lack of respect. And that's how, like, would I say the majority of women are? A, a significant proportion of women have this kind of default mindset against men here. So you can really see how simping has evolved into the culture and became a major part of the culture. Now, it's not this extreme in, say, Russia, for example. It does exist in Russia, especially in Gen Zs. Um, but here it's much more deeply ingrained and fundamental uh, to the dating culture. So I wanted this video to be a bit of an insight just about dating culture here. Because, it, look, it's, it's a bit rough, man. For the average Belarusian guy, it's a bit rough. Like, it's it's... 
there's not a lot of interest. There's not a lot of default interest in men. There's not a lot of uh, kind of respect or dignity given to men. It really is a woman's society. It's very matriarchal. The woman's the boss. Uh, there are exceptions, by the way. There are some kind of masculine men and there are some feminine women. But for the most part, that's kind of what you're getting. It's like the woman just lives her life and the man has to somehow fit in there and go out of his way for everything because she won't go out of her way at all for anything. This is what you see, I would say, with 80% of couples that I see, this kind of dynamic. There are differences, especially when a girl has a very specific agenda. Um, she'll put in effort then, often a lot of effort. It's quite extreme in that sense. But for your average, normal kind of girl, um, you know, as I say, maybe 70, 80% of girls, they just don't have much interest in men. It was really trained out of them by the Soviets. There's really a, a no, I guess, tradition here in a sense. This is kind of surface level Stalinist behavior which has been too diluted and I think also World War II was a big factor I think that just the fact that there was almost no men there was almost no fertile age men so women have just learned how to survive without men and they literally don't know the purpose of men or have no real interest in men and then men have developed this simping strategy and it's kind of like just perpetuated the, the disinterest dislike and disrespect towards men and it's really I don't want to overstate this but it's quite significant i mean even compared to australia even in australia now it's 2024 and obviously you know things are going downhill fairly fast women's values being pushed up men's values being pushed down around the world it's, it's a globally engineered phenomenon but even in australia the average woman still has some interest in the average man just because she recognizes some value there right and a man has the same thing for a woman but in belarus not so much like it, it's it's a lot rarer anyway it's less it's less common than you might find in a Western country. Now don't forget, the girl I was referring to in this video probably has almost no interest in me either. Just thinking, well, it's an interesting foreign guy, maybe I can benefit somehow from this situation. That's more the mindset, right, in this kind of situation. She might be generally interested, I don't know, but probably not. It's probably more erring on the, on the former side. Now, if you're a guy, and if you're in this situation, like, you've just got to eject. I mean, you just have to eject because even if this guy somehow weasels his way in, yeah, and she's like, okay, he's the one that's going to pay for me when I have a kid. Fuck, all right, it's got to be him. Just imagine how she's going to treat him in a relationship. Like, this is brutal. I mean, he's just going to get treated like shit and just be like a servant, in essence. I mean, it's really rough. Now, I'm not saying every relationship here is like this. It's certainly not. But this is a, certainly a theme here that's very significant and and common that I don't see in a lot of other countries, right? It tends to be reserved for certain countries and, and Belarus is definitely one of them. Now, this guy really is better off just ejecting. And any guy, if you can see that you're, you're simping, you're orbiting, you're hoping something happens, right? But you can see how she responds to other men and it's very different. you just got to get out of there, man. It's just, man, I see it. I've got, like, I have a lot of Belarusian friends, a lot of young guys, and, and I see the shit they do. The extremities they go to, and a lot of these girls, I've got one other instance in my, I won't tell the story now, but I just said to him literally during the week, he's like, mate, she treats her dog better than she treats you. Like, what are you doing? Now, I don't want to put you off Belarus. Belarus is a great country. I've really enjoyed my time here, and uh, I've had a great experience, and I, I, I recommend that you at least visit. Uh, Belarus at some stage if not live here like I have but I just want to give a bit more of a realistic perspective <laughs> like Westerners just have this obscene fantasy uh, about how things would be in a country like uh, Belarus or Russia and so forth and they're simply just entirely inaccurate I don't know how these stereotypes got created I'm not sure who perpetuated them but they are absolutely absolutely inaccurate 